In this video, we'll cover a quick overview of the input and output sections of the UXA4401 and UXA4403 amplifiers. So we'll start with the input channel. And you'll notice you have four tabs to choose from at the top, analog, SPDIF, mix, and generator. We'll start with analog. First, you'll have a high pass filter toggle that's at 100 hertz. So if you know you want to high pass at 100 hertz right out of the gates, you can click that button. You have a mono and stereo toggle. So when you're in stereo, it's combining input channels one and two and three and four. Underneath that, you have sensitivity. So you have mic, negative 10 dBV. This is your consumer level. Plus four dBU. This is more of your pro audio level. And then a plus 14 dBU. Underneath that, you can expand to adjust your gain. And then underneath that, you have a five band PEQ. To configure this, there's a couple different ways you can go about it. You can click on the band itself. You can select the filter you would like to use and then click and drag this around. Or you can go down one more level. You can select the PEQ band that you would like to adjust and then manually adjust that with the sliders that are available here. If you decide you don't want to use the PEQ bands that you've enabled, it's as simple as just disabling them and you're back to a flat response. Taking a look at the SPDIF channel, this is pretty straightforward. You can break out from stereo to mono. Aside from that, you have a gain control. Clicking on mix, this gives you four unique mixes between analogs one through four and SPDIF, allowing you to assign different mixes to different zones. Generator, you can either use a noise generator, which has a configurable high pass, low pass filter, or you can use a sign generator. You have a gain slider and then a frequency slider. Moving to zone, your volume controls are very similar to input. You have a mono stereo toggle. When you're in stereo, A and B is combined, C and D is combined. You have a volume slider or a gain slider, and then you have a mute button. Looking at the source options, here's where you would assign your primary input to a zone. So if you wanted to assign analog two to zone A, you would do that here. You can also set priority. So if you click priority, it allows you to set a priority input. So if you're getting signal from mix one, it's going to override the input of analog two. And then additionally, you have a ducking option. So this will apply compression as the input is being fed into the channel and you can set your threshold here. If you wanted to configure this further, you could click on manual and this gives you further options such as depth, attack, hold and release. There's also a configurable compressor underneath your main priority input. So here you have the same options. You could set threshold, attack, hold, and release. And then you can override your zone volume here by enabling this and then setting your override volume. Now, if you click on volume, you can set a default range. So if you knew you didn't want your volume to go below negative 30 and then above negative 10. You could set that here. There's a toggle for allow mute on. And underneath that is your GPIO controls. So I'm going to break away from the zone temporarily and go to settings and then GPIO. So here's where you would go to configure your pins for your GPIO controls. So pin one's soft ground by default. You can set pin two to either standby or mute. Pin three is your ground. Pin four is set to volume control. Pin five is set to volume control. Pin six could be volume control or it could be 12 volt trigger in. Pin seven is the same. It could be 12 volt trigger out or volume control. And then pin eight is 3.3 volt power for volume controls. So now if you go back to your zone and your volume, 
and scroll back down to GPIO, you can now assign these controls to the specific zone. So if you want a volume control for GPIO4 to be assigned to zone A, you could do that here. You'll notice there's a little note here that says, please set GPIO6 as volume source to enable. So we had it set to the 12 volt. If we were to switch that to volume control, this would be a configurable option here. Moving to restrictions, you can restrict specific inputs to specific zones. So if you knew you wanted to restrict analog three from zone A, you could do that here. You also have this option for SPDIF inputs and your mix inputs. Lastly, on the zone, you have a user configurable compressor. Default allows you to set the threshold only. Clicking manual gives you more options such as attack time, release time, hold time, ratio, and knee. So let's move on to the output channel. Again, your main controls are very similar, except up here you do have a polarity switch, you have a mute button, and you have a gain control. Then underneath that, by default, is routing. So here's where you would assign your zones to your outputs. So if you wanted zone B to be assigned to output one, here's where you would do that. Uh, delay, if you need to delay certain output channels, here's where you would configure that. You have various options between samples, milliseconds, feet, and meters. You wanna make sure that it's enabled. Up here, there's a toggle to turn it on and off. Once you have the unit configured the way that you like, you can set your value using the slider here. Or you can move in smaller increments by clicking the arrows to the left and right of the slider. Clicking on equalizer, you have a more robust EQ here than you do on the input channel. This is a 10 band PEQ. And in order to configure it, click on edit. You can click on the channel you wish to edit here and then click and drag similar to the input channel. Or you can go down here and manually configure your frequency, your gain, and your Q. Once you're satisfied with your curve, you can click OK. You can copy this curve to another channel. So if you like the way that this EQ is configured and you know you want to duplicate it on another channel, here's where you can do that. Or if you wish to clear and start from zero, start with a flat curve, simply hit clear and okay. And now you're back to where you started. Lastly, a speaker preset. And here's where you would go to configure your output channel. So you can set your crossover and gain here, your speaker EQ. You can load your FIR filters. Um, you can set your limiters here. Alternatively, if you're using an EW product, here's where you would go to load your gray box preset as well and you would go to select preset from library. I suggest going to the EW education site where there's a video that explains this in detail, but to quickly go over it here, you click select preset from library, scroll down to the product you're using, select it, hit use selected, and now you have your speaker tuning loaded. You can hit clear preset to bring you back to the default. A couple of other options you have here is import preset from file. So if you have a preset saved on your system, you wish to load into the amplifier, you'd click this button here, browse to it, and select import. And lastly, if you are happy with the settings on this channel and you want to export it to use in another amplifier, hit export preset to file, select the parameters you want to be included in the export, and then click export. 